Hi, welcome to Engineering. Today we're going to learn how to do the traverse using the table method. So as you can see, we have a problem in front of us, and the problem states the reduced orientated directions and distances of a traverse beginning 1 to end are as follows. And then it proceeds to tell you the different lines, a line being one point to another point, and each of those lines shows the direction and the distance from one of the points to the other. So in other words, it'll be the direction from beginning to one, and that's the distance between them. And then it also gives you the coordinates for the first and the last station or last point on our survey or of our traverse survey. So we named it beginning and end just to make it easier. Then they said calculate the traverse and correct it using Bowditch's method or rule. Alright, so first of all we start with a table. Uh, the table has different columns. First column being point, where we will write down all the names of the points in our traverse. Then we have a column for the directions and the distances, as well as a column for the delta y and delta x, and our coordinates for our y and our x. So firstly, we'll put in our information that was given to us in the question. Or in our field book if we think of a realistic scenario so we first start with beginning uh, to one's direction and distance then one to two direction and distance and two to end direction and distance we put this obviously in the direction and distance column as well as we also put our first coordinates and last coordinates as given to us so the first thing we'll do is we'll calculate our delta y and our delta x. Our delta y is calculated using our distance for distance times sine of our direction. In other words, we'll take, for example, with this first example, uh, we'll say 231.19 times the sine of direction, which is this direction over here, and we'll get a value of 13.297. So that's when we use this formula to calculate our delta y. Then our delta x is a very similar formula, except that we'll use cosine instead of sine. So we'll use the cos. So we'll say our distance times the cos of direction, and we'll get our delta x. So we'll do this for all the stations, or all the lines, from one point to the other. Uh, since we have three directions and distances, we should get three delta y's and three delta x's. Next step we'll do is we have to calculate all of our totals. So we'll start by adding up all the directions that were given to us, and we'll make that our total s value. Then we'll also add all our delta y and delta x values. So since we have three of them, the same as the distances, we'll add up our three delta y's to get our total delta y, which in this case is 85.937. Then we'll also add all our delta x's, and these, this gives us a total of negative 816.994. Alright, so we have been given coordinates for beginning, and we also have calculated our total delta y and delta x. So, if we quickly go back to our table, uh, theoretically, if we add up all our delta y's to our y coordinate of beginning, it should give our coordinate for end. The same with the x coordinates. So, what we do is we'll add our total delta y's and total delta x's to our original coordinates, and we'll calculate the coordinates for our end uh, point. Then we'll take these values, uh, you'll see that we actually do have real coordinates for end. And these coordinates are very similar to what we calculated, but they're not exactly the same. So you see that both the x and the y coordinates are similar, but not the same. So we have to make an adjustment for this. So what we'll do is we'll take our end calculated, we'll shift it down into the next table, and we'll subtract the calculated value from the real value. So in other words, we'll take our y minus the calculated y, and we'll get a value 
which we call our dy value. Same with the dx for our x coordinates, we'll say the x of the real minus the calculated x coordinate will give us a dx. These two values are very important for our corrections, as you'll see now. So we'll take these two values, the dy and the dx, and we'll use these two formulas. They're very similar formulas. You'll see when you do these calculations or these corrections, uh, you have very repetitive work only changing one value at a time. So we'll start with dy of our total s times the length of leg, while the other one differs only with the dx. So this is to calculate our correction for y, this is our correction for x. So you'll see in our table we have the three distances that were given to us. Those are our length of legs. So in other words, when we calculate our correction from beginning to 1, so our correction for 1, we will use this value as our length of leg. And then also just take note, the total s will be constant throughout these corrections, which is the total we calculated earlier. So we'll start by substituting our values in. So we've got this negative 0, 0, 0,027. Uh, this is negative 0, 0,027 is our dy. We put it over the total s and then we times it by the length of the leg which I showed you now, now in the table which is our distance and we get a correction for 1. We do exactly the same except that we, instead of a dy value we now use a dx value. So we'll repeat this for each of the points, each of the directions until we have corrections for our y and our x values. So these are very important to adjust to make sure our values are correct. So firstly, just a little check before we continue. You can add up all your corrections for your y and that, which I have labeled check 3, should have or calculated to be the same value as your dy. Same with check 4. If you add up all your x values, they should give you a value that's the same as your dx value. That just shows that you've done the calculations correctly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these calculations, these corrections, we're going to put it into our table. So you'll see we'll put them in the row above the delta y and delta x. Please take note that's how we make the table. So the first row will be our direction, second row distance. In the row of our distance we put in our delta y and delta x, where in the row of our direction, we'll put in our two corrections. Alright, so we'll put in all the corrections we calculated, and these, as well with the delta y and delta x values, we'll use to calculate the two coordinates that we need. So the way we'll do this is we'll take our first coordinate, we'll plus our correction, plus our delta y, and we'll get our new y coordinate. We do the same with our x coordinate. Take the x coordinate plus the correction plus the delta x, and we get a new x coordinate. We'll repeat this process where we take the coordinate plus the correction plus the delta y to get our new y coordinate. We'll do the same with the x. So, in a very long table, in a very long survey, we'll repeat this step until we've got to our last survey point in which this point should, by calculation, equal to the coordinates that were given to us. If it works out that it equals the same as the coordinates given to us, then we know we've done our calculations correctly. Alright, so that will be the Travis table. I hope this video helped. Please, make, please ask if you have any questions. We're more than willing to help. This is the point of this channel. And please ask if there are any other videos you would like us to make.